Have you got your eggs and tomatoes ready? Okay, I have the pleasure of presenting in front of you all lined up to throw your stuff at them. The board of the KDE EV. This is uh, an ask us anything session, so you can ask them anything. It doesn't, uh, it, it actually doesn't say any, it, it says ask us anything, it doesn't have any exceptions, so you can ask them um, about the flight that we chartered last Thursday and spent all of our money on, so ICA now has to deal with literally an empty bank account. <laughs> anyway, so uh, they're ready for your questions, and uh, okay, the stage is all yours. Okay, Adrian. Maybe before we start with questions, we start with a short introduction, or does everyone know us? No? Okay. <laughs> All right. So, hi. I'm Lydia. I'm with Kitty for, I think, 11 or 12 years now, and on the board since six of those. Hi. I'm Thomas. I've been in Kitty since 2008, and I've been elected to the board last year. Um, my name is Eike. I got elected yesterday. Um, I've been using KDE since about 99 and hacking on it since 2005 and became an EV member about two years later. And I hack on Plasma and some apps. Uh, I'm Alej Paul. I've been also developing KDE for a long time, over 10 years this year. Ooh. And I've been in uh, part of the KDE EV board for three years now. Uh, hi, my name is Sandro Andraji. Uh, I'm Contributed to, uh, to KDE and for uh, almost 10 uh, years uh, uh, already. And I'm in the board uh, of directors since 2015 to, for two uh, years. Yeah. So the question. I have two questions. I'm going to state them both, and then the people I'm asking them of are going to answer them. So I'm going to ask Aika, what does KDE EV do? And then I'm going to ask Lydia, is Ica right? <laughs> well, I think the, the EV's mission is to first of support the KDE community in its various activities, so it needs to have its ear on the ground. And there's always been, there's been sort of an awkward relationship between the community and the EV at times, because the EV is supposed to stay out of steering decisions that the community makes, but at the same time, it's sort of the only organ we have to, to make sort of a voting decision, so that doesn't always work. But I think it's about sort of, we've built up a lot of institutional knowledge in the EV over the last 20 years, and it's about continuing that. <laughs> You've learned well for your first day. <laughs> yes, um, I would maybe add to that that in general we see KDE EV as the organization that supports what the KDE community is doing um, in organizational matters like uh, this academy, financial matters, getting some of you here by paying for your plane tickets and so on. Um, and legal matters um, by, for example, working with the KDE Free Qt Foundation in order to keep Qt free. Next question here. So, following the the question and also the question I asked yesterday. Uh, the mission of the KDE EV is to support the whole KDE community. And do you think it's reasonable to elect to let all the members vote if one can join EV? Do you understand? Now, right now we will have a proposal for someone if he wants to join the KDEV EV and, uh, and uh, after the vote systems, 
we will see, okay, how many voters and uh, how many agrees, how many disagree, how many obtains. But do you think it's reasonable for people to join the EV? If I want to support EV, if I want to support KDE, why do I need to let other members agree? And the other question is the same. We have twice the voted vote number is not enough. But we still have no conclusion that if it is the vote invalid or we disagree, these people join you. So what do you think about this? Okay, so for a little bit of context for people who are not part of the EV or don't really follow the email as they should. To join the KDV membership, one of the one part of the process is that you will uh, answer a questionnaire and this will be sent to the membership and then there is a vote to decide if this person should be part of the KDV membership or not. Um, part of uh, the issue that Franklin is pointing out at is that one of the rules we have is that th there is a quorum that needs to be matched and at some point there was a vote that didn't uh, have enough um, votes for it to be valid and so the vote wasn't valid which is actually what happened right what is left to be discussed is whether that's philosophically what we want to happen in the organization we're creating which is actually a very good debate to have and actually it's something we we should be having i myself i, I feel I'm in a position where I'm not an expert in votes or democracy. I mean, I have a notion like most of us have, but I don't really know what would be the best solution. I can see how it, it's, it's a problem, but we need to have someone who is interested in this subject and wants to fix it. Regarding whether we should have a vote or not, which you also pointed at, uh, if I understood you correctly, I think that it kind of makes sense that if you have to work on something that you believe that is truly important, you get to at least choose who you're working with. In the KT community, actually, there is no kind of vote. Everyone can, can, can collaborate. And actually, in the KD community is where we are actually creating our products. We're, we are actually creating the value that we add. The KD EV, on the other hand, is an organization to support that. And it's an organization where we have to um, trust each other much more and we have to discuss subjects that are not strictly related with the product in itself and I can see how this was at least I can see how this was initially the idea whether it could be changed it's obviously up for discussion as everything I actually always believe that if something is considered to be um, a problem always should be discussed but on the other hand I don't really have the impression that it has been a problem in the past. If anybody wants to collaborate with KDE, they have. I have n not seen uh, a case where the member has been not accepted in the organization. There has, have been some problems in the past, that's for sure, but uh, it's always cases that are not conclusive, as in we can look into, it, into the problem again and, and see what 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 we can do so that this person who is uh, is trying to join can actually bring the value to the organization that he wants to bring which is actually what we are after right and if there are doubtful cases we should also actually discuss that right we, we don't have to let ourselves be blind by some numbers that haven't gone the, the way we liked if there is some formula that we don't like we change it we are software developers we do that every day we need to do it with our codes and so adding adding to that um, for me the problem is not that there is a vote about whether people can come into the EV or not for me that still makes sense um, the the big problem that we have right now is the large number of uh, people who still have active voting rights but are not exercising them because they don't really care about KDE anymore um, this has been discussed at the AGM and um, yeah, people have, have brought up that we should make it maybe easier to set yourself to active or passive and maybe we should uh, have another push in, in the mailing list to uh, ask people to ask themselves, okay, do I really want to have to keep my vote? 
And do I want to either have my vote and also use it actively, or maybe just not keep my vote, still keep uh, staying in the EV because it's a bunch of my friends and I, I want to keep connected with them, but not have a right to vote because I won't actually use it. And uh, yeah, this is something that I will definitely want to follow up. Um, I, during the AGM, I, I said that I had written uh, an email to the mailing list asking people to think about that, and I had, but it was in a thread, which many people probably didn't even read. So uh, th that was not really good placement of that, um, but this is something we can change, of course, and to just really, and, and this could already be a lot of help to um, have only those with active voting rights who actually are likely to use them, and then we won't have such a situation with the too low quorum. So in terms of voting on new EV members, um, that's, a, that's a peer review system, the kind of which we kind of use all over KDE. And you actually get a lot out of that. For example, if you look at how we do developer accounts, right? We have very flat hierarchies within the community. If you have a developer account, you can commit to anything. And that only really works if the stranger committing to your code base, if you believe, A, that they are supposed to do that, that they have the right to do that. You trust there was some process that gave them those access privileges and that process check them thoroughly and, and you trust that person, right? They, they have commit access and they should have commit access. And also, it's very important for them to feel that they are within their right to commit to your code base. Like, it's about emancipating those people. And for developer accounts, we use the same sort of peer review system. When you apply for a developer account, you have to name a supporter this admin will ask that supporter for input on whether you should really get your developer account and if your supporter okays that then you're in and what that process ensures is that somebody thinks you understand the etiquette of how the community works together and you're now fit to to have a developer account and you can share those responsibilities and those rights and that's kind of how it works in the EV as well if you need supporters to join the EV, and if a vote confirms that you should be in the EV, then that immediately equips you with, with the feeling that you are accepted, that you can step up to do things. And at the same time, everybody in the membership already will now know that you're supposed to be there. So I think you get a lot out of a peer review system like that. I know I always used to think as well that it's kind of awkward that the EV self-selects its own members and that could lead to like corruption and whatever. But I think you also have to look at the real track record. So I've been in the EV since 10 years and I think there have been two applications that have been rejected in that time and there were kind of obvious cases. So I don't think there's any indication that there really has been a problem with it. And if you think it really has been a problem, then you should definitely point that out and raise it, and then we need to deal with that. Uh, one thing that happened in Gate Spain a few, well, one year ago is that we actually realized that it was kind of a problem. We were following exactly the same model we did in the GDV membership. And actually, the concern there wasn't that you would be having, like, some people deciding who gets in, but it was more of a, it's a bit of a overly too complex process, right? So what we did there, and maybe it's something we could export to the membership, is that um, the applicant also sends a message um, with some questions answered, and basically the membership can vet the person to enter if they know that they're a bad person or some or a crazy person. But in general, like, there's no, um, voting in itself, this could be done. But then it's something that doesn't need to happen by us. Like, we're not your parents. If you guys think that something is important, you guys can propose it. Um, one thing in addition, of course, if you've been contributing to KDE for, for a while, and you're not a member, but you um, feel like you would like to contribute to furthering the organization um, that supports KDE, then uh, talk to an existing EV member um, and, for example, all of us, um, so that we can help you write your application and so on. 
And also, in addition to, uh, to that, in the case where you become a KD EV member, or if you are already a KD EV member, there are a number of the tasks that you can help the bird to do so. So we have a, f a fabricator uh, workbook where there are a lot of t t tasks that sh shouldn't be done by the board. And so you are all invited to pick up one of two and have them made, right? Any other questions? Hello. Considering the entry barriers for new persons or new victims on KDE, uh, I've seen a lot of frustration because we are on GitHub, but we don't accept pull requests on GitHub. Are we going to try to loosen the tights there? I hope not. No, um, well, this this topic, whether we should accept uh, pull requests on, on GitHub, that was discussed very extensively by the community. And uh, in the end, it was the community who decided not to do it. And this uh, was, I mean, not everybody agreed with that, but there was pretty broad consensus. Um, so that is definitely not something that we would ever interfere with. So uh, as long as the community, the majority of the community seems to think that this is not something we should do, then this is how it is. Um, again, if you think this should change, then uh, what you'd have to do is convince fellow KDE contributors that this is a good idea, and then it would certainly be changed. So this is not something that is decided top down in any way. So I'd like to ask a question in relation to the previous question that was asked. Um, do you think that um, people in the community think that gaining, uh, be becoming a member, they're becoming a member of the KDE EV because it gives them some form of status within the community or could it be perceived or do you think that that's why um, some of the problems that we have actually happen? Or, uh, and in, continu in continuation to that, do you think like you, you could better define and better communicate what sort of people with what sort of goals should be in the EV and people with what sort of goals should not be a part of the, uh, uh, that's not what the EV is for? Um, yeah. Mm, I haven't really encountered that. Uh, do you feel there's a perception in the community that there's sort of a class difference between EV members and not? Because I haven't met anybody who is not on the EV and doesn't feel like they're part of the KDE community, if just because they're not in the EV. So, like, have you actually encountered that in the wild? Yes. I wouldn't want to take examples, but yes, I have. Well, I, I, I did get the distinct feeling a couple of times that yes. Mm. So, well, if that's the case, then I do think we should fix that. I think yeah. it should be clearly communicated that the EV is a support organization, yeah. and the reason to be in the EV is to get work done supporting the community and or make sure there's a representative sampling of the community in the EV so it can make credible and legitimate decisions. And that's about it. It, it just the best case scenario is that it creates extra work for you. Right. So I think that we should have more communication in, in the sense that what sort of, uh, who, uh, if you are this, 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 then you should apply to the EVs, uh, communication along those lines. Well, well one thing, one thing. I, I think that it's worth understanding that if somebody has been a long-term contributor to KD, it's logical that they're part, interested in being part of the KDV membership. It's because if you're committed lots of lines of code, for example, or, or you've done lots of articles on the, on the promo, it means that you're in, involved in the project in, in different levels and you will be interested in collaborating at an organizational level. So it's definitely something that should follow. And I, I know people who have been contributing that they have told me, no, no, I'm not interested in the organizational part, then that's perfectly fine. And I don't consider them like lesser contributors or human beings, but that, well, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to ask the question that nobody wants to answer. Is KDEV a supportive body or a governance body? 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, at the end of the day, um, I think it has to be both. Um, we have to have the organization that supports the KDE community um, to make academy run, um, to have our office where people can send mail, invoices, and so on. That, that all needs an organizational support framework. Um, but at the same time, KDE doesn't have any other thing that could, could do that kind of governance. At the same time, for a large part of KDE, that is a touchy subject because governance is a bad word. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, um, some decisions need to be made. And um, for example, a long time ago, the creation of a community working group, um, someone had to make a decision that, that we want to have that. And um, we don't have any other, other body that, that could do that. Yeah. <laughs> so I think the way I think about it, it's not a governance body, but it's a tool that the wider community sometimes chooses to employ because the EV has a decision-making system and a voting system, and it's the only one the community has. So sometimes the community appears to decide that somebody has to vote and then looks to the EV to do that. And the cases where that crops up tend to be, unfortunately, sort of ugly enforcement issues. Like, the, one of the problems is, what if somebody misbehaves really badly, and at what point do you kick him out of a mailing list? And who makes that call? So when I was on the sysadmin team, that was always the question, is the sysadmin team the body that decides who to kick out of the mailing list, or is that the list moderator, or does the EV do that? And I can think of one case where essentially it ended up being escalated to the EV membership and something was decided at the General Assembly. And that set sort of an interesting precedent, I suppose. And that's where we are now. So you can say that there is a track record of governance decisions having been made. And we should probably look into codifying that better at some point or es establishing it better. And, and then having a discussion about whether it's a good thing or not. But it's what we've been doing so far. <laughs> me? Okay, me. Uh, I'm gonna ask about money. Nobody asks us money. Uh, we've always had the uh, notion of donations and money going to a common pot. Uh, that made some people create their own organizations because they wanted to have their own money. Uh, how do you feel about us having some, uh, yeah, I know, I, I, I left the board so I can ask the question. Uh, how do you feel about uh, us being able to help those people without them having to create an organization that we all know sucks and uh, makes you feel bad and you get fines because you do things bad and taxes are evil. Um, okay, so maybe I can, I, I can start answering that. Um, interestingly enough, the times when groups want to move away is when things are great. The times when they come back to the mothership is when things suck in whatever shape or form. So as far as I know, all the organizations or groups or whatever that have done that in KDE have come back because it didn't work out. Um, so I don't believe that is a viable way forward. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and I also think that we do need a common pot of resources, big money or, or whatever else, um, that goes into the pieces of KDE that are 
not as sexy and that wouldn't necessarily be able to attract enough um, resources through shiny fundraising and so on. Um, but at the same time, maybe we should need to think about giving the projects that do really cool stuff and that um, should get exposure and that um, can can get people excited, um, give them some way to to get a bigger share of that. Um, how that looks like, I I don't know, but um, that's something we can discuss. Yeah, as I understand. Actually, it's not true that all of them left and then they're all coming back. For example, Albert and I, we started KD Spain a long time ago. We haven't come, come back yet. Okay. <laughs> but on the other hand, it sucks to create your own organization. And we want people interested in creating free software to actually be creating free software and not bothering with the bureaucracy, which like you can say, yeah, it's not a big deal. It's a fucking big deal. <laughs> it's not fun. And actually, like it's, it's uh, a problem. And while probably not they all have come back they have all definitely had problems with bureaucracy and and that's that's a big deal also a second thing the reason why most of them have uh, created an organization is because uh, unlike KD Spain which is a different thing is because um, they wanted to hire people so the question is do we want to allow projects to do fundraising and then hire people, which is a very interesting pro uh, subject to have. It's something definitely to fix, but I think that we need to point at what's the actual problem. It's not that people want to actually have organizations because it's fun and they're successful, but it's because when you're successful you, you, and when you can grow, you want to grow, so you hire people. And at the moment, we don't allow for that. Hiring people could be interesting. But how it would work is not trivial. And actually, we've started to look into it, but we don't have a good answer to give yet. So we haven't given an, any answer. And I think that apart from the from the whole hiring situation, it all uh, it also regulates itself somehow because the um, the projects that are more successful and that might actually get more uh, donations in usually also those who are more active, who have more people, who are, uh, have more people coming to academy, who have, are more likely to have sprints. So they already also get more money out of the common pot. So it's, it's really, yeah, it, it always comes down to people wanting to hire people. That's when it becomes difficult. Um, and yeah, we have to find a solution for that. But in general, I think it's, it's not like there's some project which uh, generates all the donations and doesn't get much out of it, unless they generate donations without being active, which would be weird. Well, I think uh, one sort of benefit to having, having sub-organizations that hire people is, of course, distributing liability and that kind of thing. So you also get some things out of it and from the perspective of the mothership, I suppose. So. Disclaimer, I've worked on one of the proposals for next year's academy and I wanted to ask if there's anything that you can tell us yet if um, what the competing cities are, if there's been anything that's been decided yet. So we have received three proposals for hosting academy 2018 um, from Vienna, Belgrade and Munich. Um, they all were great. We discussed them in the EV membership and, and got feedback. Um, and I think we can announce a decision tomorrow. Hey, I'm actually sitting right here. Um, I, 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 I'm wondering whether I, I should join or not the EV. I, 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 I joined uh, KD Spain uh, because I knew they uh, they could use the, the help with organization and such, and uh, there is a, a you pay a bit of money each year, which helps support. And in Cadiz, Spain, it helps. Thank you. But uh, I, I don't really I don't really see how I could be of help joining the EV. I mean, I really don't see why I I, I would join the EV. 
I don't see why I would join. I also don't see why I would not. I'm not really sure what I should do. So one reason by proxy is that um, KJV gives the uh, powers to KJ Spain regarding the use of trademark in Spain, right? If you are being given a right, you want to probably have some kind of control over that right. There's a lot of reasons why you might want to be part of the KDV, and you should look at the tasks we're doing. Like holding the trademark of, of uh, KDE is one of them. Uh, others could be, I don't know, FLA, you can be interested in the license of your software. Uh, the KDV has been working on ways to make sure that KD software stays free forever, right? Or the KD Free Cute Foundation. Uh, so these are all software, uh, these are all subjects that are very related to KDE, much like the work you've very well been doing in, in KDE Spain. And I, I don't really see a reason why, the, uh, the reasons why you join wouldn't translate. In, in the end, it's about having an orga organizations that um, back up the, the support that you can give in, into, into the project, right? Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. And, and then at the point where you ask yourself, should I join, then most likely the answer is yes. <laughs> because that, if you ask yourself that question, it means that you care a lot about KDEV, and that is already going to likely make you a good contributor to the organization. Unless, like many people, you don't take the tasks that we're putting on the fabricator, because then it's like, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, I brought this up last year, and um, I'm bringing it up again this year because of uh, yesterday's um, uh, because of the uh, yesterday's report on the KDE League. We are leaving money on the table in the U.S. because we don't have a 501c3 or nonprofit organization there. Uh, there are. Uh, people who are willing to donate to KDE but would like to have those donations be tax exempt. So the donations have to be through um, into an US nonprofit. Uh, do, we ha do we want to do this? Do we have, a do we have any preliminary uh, ideas of whether we want to do something like this, whether we don't want to do this at all? Or if we do want to do something like this, uh, should we form a task force or should we f do something about right. it? We already have a task force for doing something like that. But it's not really going on the way you like. We definitely want to have a better presence on United States. We definitely need that. We need to have a proper established community there, which isn't there. And that's the reason why we aren't holding the, the organizational bodies, that we are like we're not confident in it. As soon as we started to have many thousands of people doing uh, organizational stuff, which is a lot of work, like we said before, having an organization is a lot of work and unpleasant work. If we had these kind of people in the United States, we would be, I guess, all super happy to support and get money from all of the, these Americans who want to donate to us. We need the people first. So yeah, if you want to make that happen, I think the next steps are, first of all, building up more community there with the help of the people who are already there, like Valerie, for example. Um, and the other thing, is help disassemble the existing organization that we already have. Um, that is ongoing, but has stalled now. Um, KDE League, it's called. Um, once we have that disassembled, and at least more community in the US than we have now, then I think we should definitely talk about that. I believe you were talking about the, the basically the, the donations part of being able to donate with, from the USA with. Okay, hearing that, I'm thinking of uh, Chakra, the Linux distribution. Uh, we we have uh, some kind of agreement with. Uh, I, I believe it's called. Uh, the the it's S S S P I I think a server in the public interest. I wonder if that's something that could work for having the donations from the U.S. and having them tax exempt. Mm -hmm. um, we have done something similar for 
um, one sub project, Amarok, in the past. Um, not with SPI, but um, with Yes, um, that was a lot of overhead. <laughs> um, so SPI might be something to look into um, if, if that is less overhead. Well, and while he gets the microphone, it's part of the, the par part of the reason why we created KD Spain at some point is because having a non-profit organization in a country is useful to get the nations in that country. It makes sense for that. But you need to have people like the amount of hours Albert and I have put into doing it for Spain, you cannot imagine. And it's just Spain, which I guess that being a smaller country makes a smaller amount of work. Uh, I guess we have uh, time for another question. So one more question. Sorry? Yeah. And it's not okay. passive aggressive cake. <laughs> Okay, if there are no questions, further questions, we can call this a wrap. So uh, thank you, board. Thank you, Mothership. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>